Welcome, ARC players. You've reached this junction in the tape because you've decided that you are an ARC player. You've either identified yourself through the body identification test or you've gone through the total testing process and you've found that you are an ARC player. If this is true, you'll find that you have a lot of flexibility, long limbs, you are tall and thin with not much chest. If this is true, you're ready to move on the ARC video. Jim, why don't you come on on and give us a little deeper description of the ARC player. This is Jason. Jason is a teaching professional here at PGA National. And we're using Jason as our typical ARC uh, player. An ARC player we're also classifying as an ectomorph. An ectomorph would be somebody with a very thin body build. And uh, so doing, you can see Jason's very tall, first of all. He has long levers, the levers being from the shoulder socket to the hands, very long. Usually large hands, in most cases usually long legs. And if we turn them this way here towards me, you can see very little chest here. Because of the small chest area, he will swing the club in the height dimension, which we will talk about here in, in just a few minutes here. Uh, now we are going to teach you the fundamentals of the arc player. We are now ready for the building blocks to a perfect arc golf swing. Our first building block is the preparation stage, which has five elements. The second building block is the takeaway, which has two elements. And then we have our third and final building block, the downswing, which has three elements. We'll run you through each one of these and help you become a better arc player. Let's start with the preparation stage. Now, let's talk about the grip for the arc player. What the grip is going to do is going to establish some things that need to occur in the golf swing itself. So the first thing we need to do is learn how to hold the golf club. The arc player will always take the club and place it across his body as such. When he does this, it gives the thumb of the left hand a short position. It also places the club diagonally across the hand. When the left thumb is in a short position, it will allow the club to set much, much later in the golf swing. Jason, come on over here and let's show him how to do this. So. Jason's going to stand here, and he's going to take the golf club and place it here. This puts the club diagonally throughout his hand, giving him a very short left thumb position, as you can see. Now, the diagonal part is important because it allows him to have more erect posture, which is important because that will minimize the amount of arm swing he has. It also is important, the short thumb, because it's going to allow him to set the club much later in the golf swing, which is very important for an arc player. It is magic for the arc player to set the club late. It is tragic for the arc player to set the club early. Okay? Then he's going to bring the club up in front of him and place the right hand on. When we do this, the knuckles should line up. It's very important that the right hand is more on top of the handle. Notice the hand position of the right hand. It is in what is termed a weak position. This is important because it allows us to play the ball a little farther forward to accommodate the lateral motion that occurs in his swing. It's also important because what this does is it keeps the right arm on top and extended on his back swing. That's very important. So by placing the right hand in a weaker position, it allows the right arm to stay extended longer in his back swing. The setup is downswing fall. So let's review the grip. Thank you very much, Jason. The arc player will simply take the club, placing it across his body and grabbing it in this position with the left hand. The left thumb will be very, very short. The club will rest diagonally across the palm of his hand. He will then raise the club up in front of him, taking the right hand, lining the knuckles up, placing the right hand more on top of the handle. By setting my hands in this position, it makes it much easier for the things that need to occur for the arc player. The ball position for the arc player is, first of all, very much further forward than the other two swing styles. Uh, it would so be it, uh, for example, the short irons are going to be towards the logo on the shirt. The five, six, seven, eight, and nine iron wedges are going to be on the logo on the shirt. The uh, Two, three, four iron plus the fairway woods would be towards the armpit. And uh, the driver would be off the 
left shoulder. Uh, let me demonstrate right here. Jason, would you come up here a minute, please? Kind of demonstrate for us. Here's the, um, the seven iron. And we have three ball positions here to show you. This one's gonna be on the logo on the shirt. And then we're gonna have the two iron. This is gonna be a little farther forward off the armpit. And finally, the driver, which is teed. It's gonna be off the left shoulder. Okay, thank you, Jason, appreciate it. Uh, now there's a reason for this. Um, we put the ball more forward in, in the arc player's um, swing for the simple reason, number one, uh, for the lateral motion that the arc player has. The arc player has a falling motion to the left side, therefore the bottom of his arc is gonna be further forward. Also, the arc player has a weakish type of right hand grip and because of that weakish right hand grip, that's gonna allow the shoulders to square up. And thirdly, the uh, arc player has a slightly closed stance and this ball position is gonna accommodate that uh, slightly closed stance. So this would be the uh, optimum ball position for the arc player further forward allows the bottom of the arc to be a little more forward than some of the other uh, styles of play. The stance is the foundation for the entire preparation stage and the golf swing. It is what determines whether we have lateral motion in the golf swing or not. It determines what direction the body moves and it determines our balance. So we need to get a solid foundation every single time. So let's go ahead and let's go to the stance. Basically, there are two parts to the stance. There's the flaring and positioning of the feet and how far we put them apart, or the width. I'm gonna bring Jason on to give me a hand with this. Let's start with the flaring and positioning of the feet. Jason, <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do for the arc player is we're gonna position his right foot. His right foot must be in a square position. Square meaning from the ball of the foot to the heel. Most of us think square is simply from the toe to the ball of the foot. In reality, the toes curve in. So what it should be is we measure it and get it square from the ball of the foot to the heel. Let's go ahead and do that, Jason. Now, what this position does is it sets us up for the proper backswing and downswing position. Because what happens with the foot in this position, it causes the right leg to lock up earlier and straighten, getting the right hip in a high position. What this does is set up the fall and the downswing. It also puts us in position to keep the weight on the inside of the right foot, which will direct the, our downswing in a lateral motion, which is necessary for the arc player because he swings the club in such an upright position. Now let's look at it from... So the right foot will be in a square position. What we will then do with the left foot is we will close the stance. Closing the stance means dropping the right foot back and moving the left foot towards the target. By closing the stance, it sets us up in position so our lateral motion is going to fall from heel to toe. It also puts us in position in a dress, so when we set up to it, we get the hips in a closed complexion. What this does is allows us to make a bigger turn in the backswing, also setting up the downswing fall and getting his right hip moving back towards the target. But what this does is optically it throws us off and it, allows, it does not allow us to turn through it. So what we do is we simply take the left foot and flare it to square. So now, the toes are in a square position. By doing this, we now have a square stance, even though in reality it's closed, as you can see here, by looking at it through the heels, it puts us in position that we, it, we are optically square, but it, in reality we are closed. Now what this does is it sets up the entire lower body action in the swing. By squaring the right foot, it causes the right leg to lock up and keep us on the inside of the foot. It causes the left knee to come behind the golf ball. It sets us up to fall on the downswing from heel to toe. So when we reach the heel, it allows us then to turn through the golf ball, creating a straightening action and causing the acceleration to happen in the delivery zone. So it's very important that we get our feet set perfectly every single time. Now, I'm going to show you how to find your ideal stance width. 
The arc player does some things differently than most golfers. Number one, they play the game from the height dimension. Because they play the game from the height dimension, there is going to have to be lateral motion to drop the club back on plane. Well, how far they have to move laterally is going to be exactly how much upright they swing the club. So the way we determine how wide the stance is going to be is simply by folding his right arm up. Once we fold his right arm up, we measure from the shoulder to the thumb, and that is going to give us how much wider than standard we're going to make the stance. Now what we've learned throughout that the narrowest the stance will ever be will be hip width apart, and the widest it will ever be is shoulder width apart. That is true except for the arc player. The arc player will start at hip width and how many inches he is folded above his shoulder will determine how much wider the stance will be. In Jason's case, if it happens to be five fingers, his stance will be five fingers wider than hip width apart for the narrowest and five fingers wider than shoulder width apart for the widest. We're now going to talk about the alignments for the arc player. The alignments for the arc player are also very unique. Uh, three basic things that have to be aimed in a line. The club face has to be aimed to the target, which is the first most important, and everything goes around the club face. So we, first of all, would aim the club face at the target. Second thing, uh, we would take a slightly closed stance, slightly closed stance, which is put this left foot here. And now in order to square the stance, in order to square the stance, I'm going to flare the foot. Now the feet are in a square condition. And I have a also a club face that's aimed at the target. Now, now in order to get the shoulders square, the ball position now is going to be in the position where we talked about earlier on the tape, more off the front off the logo on the shirt like this and this is going to square the shoulders so now the shoulders and the feet are square to the target line. We do this in the sense that this helps in the, uh, the golfer, the arc player to kind of make a kind of a big hip turn and fall to the target and this is the reason why we put the ball forward and also the why we have the alignments in this in this direction. If you do this, it should be, help you in setting up as an arc player. Let's talk about posture. What the posture does is it puts us in a balanced position. The posture also determines the plane the club is swung on, and it determines the amount of arm swing we will have in the golf swing. Jason, why don't you come on in here and help me with the posture for the arc player? Okay. The arc player, as you can see, once again is unique in the fact that he has much thinner chest, much longer arms, and much greater arm swing. What we need to do is find a posture position that, that minimizes the amount of arm swing so he can maximize the amount of turn he has and also allows him to put the club more diagonally in his hands. And the way we do that is we create a posture that is more erect. Okay, now, if I were to put Jason in the atypical leverage position where he's bent over more with the shaft and spine is 90 degrees to each other, what would happen is he would have way too much arm swing. His arms would swing clear to this position. Well, what that would cause to happen is the right arm would fold, which is magic for the leverage player, but tragic for the arc player. By standing him more erect, the left arm runs into the chest much sooner, turning the shoulders and making it a one-piece takeaway, putting the club in position for everything to happen the way it needs to happen for the arc player. Also, by standing him more erect, it allows us to put the club more diagonally in his hand and give us the short left thumb position, which is very, very important to his swing because the short left thumb position sets the club much later in the golf swing which is very very important for the arc player so he's going to stand a lot more erect to minimize the amount of arm swing to put ourselves in a short thumb position placing the club more diagonally through his hand then what will happen is his rear end will come more up by bringing it up, it creates a counterbalance for the head, putting him in a balanced athletic position. Then what will happen is, when we set up to the ball, 
his knees will be pinched in towards each other. Now this is very important. The reason the arc player wants the knees pinched in is because he wants to make sure in his backswing that his weight stays on the inside of the right foot. We also want to make sure that the left knee comes behind the golf ball, which which will set up the downswing fall because when the left knee comes behind the golf ball, it lowers the left side and sets me in position to fall into my downswing. So we need to make sure both knees are pinched in. So let's review the posture. More erect to minimize the amount of arm swing so we maximize the shoulder turn. Also to put the club more diagonally in the left hand and shorten the left thumb. Rear end up. Knees pinched together to keep the weight on the inside of the foot and cause the downswing fall. If you remember these key points, your posture will be perfect and you'll be on your way to hitting better golf shots. Now let's review the five areas of the preparation stage for the arc player. When the arc player grabs the club, it's very important that they grab the club across their body. When they do this, it sets the club diagonally in their left hand, shortening the left thumb. This is important because it will allow the club to set much later in the golf swing. The right hand will simply clap up behind the handle, lining up the knuckles, and the right hand will be slightly more on top. What this does is guarantees that the right arm will stay extended longer and set the club much later in the back swing. So this is the grip that we want to utilize for the arc player. The ball position. When we set the ball position down, we want to position the golf ball opposite the logo for the five iron on down through the wedge. As the club becomes longer, like the long irons in the fairway woods, we will play them opposite the left armpit. And any wood, driver or fairway wood that we hit off the tee, we will move the ball up to our shoulder socket. That's important because when we move the ball forward, it allows us to close the stance and still square our shoulders up. The stance. The right foot will be in a square position. The stance will be closed to set up the downswing fall so we fall from heel to toe, and then we will flare the left foot until the toes are square to the target line. By doing this, it, it puts me in position so when I turn back, the right leg locks and keeps me on the inside of the foot, and it sets up the downswing fall diagonally from heel to toe, allowing the club to drop to the inside and have me turn through the ball. The longer my arms and the more upright my backswing position, the wider my stance needs to be. Because when my, stand, when my club is swung in a more upright position, it requires more lateral motion to drop the club back to the shaft plane. So the longer the arms and more upright the swing, the more lateral motion is necessary, so the stance will become much, much wider. The alignments. The first thing we must do is aim the club face at the target. When we flared the left foot, it squared the toe line, making it parallel to the target line. When we moved the ball forward, it squared the shoulders up. Those are important, so we have a square club face, square toe line, and square shoulders. The hips will be closed. This is very important because a closed hip turn allows me to make a deeper hip turn in the backswing, which locks up my right leg and allows me to keep it to the inside and fall into the downswing. The posture. The posture will be much more erect because what we want to do is minimize the arm swing. That erect posture will also allow me to put the club more diagonally in my hand, creating a weaker left hand grip and shorter left thumb. The rear end will be up and the knees will be pinched in. By pinching the right knee in, it keeps me on the inside of the right leg. By pinching the left knee in, it allows the left knee to come behind the ball lowering my left side and setting up the downswing fall. So remember, get yourself set up properly. Remember these five setup fundamentals, and I'll guarantee you arc players will hit the ball longer, straighter, and more consistent every single time. We're now going to talk about the second building block, the takeaway or backswing. For the arc player, we call it the takeaway because it is the body that is taking the club back and not the arms that are swinging the club back. Now, the two elements to the backswing are basically number one, the initial stage, and number two, 
the loading zone. Let's go to the initial stage of the takeaway. Now I've got four teaching aids here, which are gonna help me demonstrate the perfect takeaway. The first is a wedge. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the head of the wedge up underneath his right foot. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna serve as a post restricting his hip turn and straightening his leg during the backswing. The other thing that it does, if you'll notice, that it lies directly along the line, the ball of his foot. And this is his vertical balance point. So that's the first teaching aid. The second is this arc pole. And what we're going to do is we're going to place the arc pole right at the end of this club, again, alongside the ball of the foot. And what this is going to do is when Jason takes the club away in the correct manner, you can see that the face of the club is pointing in this direction down to the ground. And what that does is it mirrors his shoulder angle, putting him in a perfect position to continue on to the top of his swing. The next teaching aid that we're going to use and all of these aids give him the feel of what we're communicating to him in words, is a board that will be placed behind the head of the club. And that board will be parallel to this club. And when he takes the club back correctly in one piece, and that is moving the chest, the shoulders, and the arms as a unit, no independent movement here, you'll see he'll push the board back and arrive at the arc pole again in perfect position. And the last teaching aid is a ball. And that ball is going to be wedged in between his arms or the sides of the triangle. And what that will teach him kinesthetically is this, that everything in this triangle moves as a unit to begin the takeaway. So Jason, if you can do that, absolutely perfect. Thank you. Now what we find is this about the takeaway. It's like a boulder at the top of a hill. It's stationary and you can direct the course of that boulder with just a touch of your finger. Once that boulder gets going, however, the power is so terrific and the speed is so high that it's no longer under your control. And that's the takeaway. It's the one time during the golf swing that everything is moving slowly. So you must be careful not to make a mistake during the takeaway. Once the swing gets going after that, it really is going to be out of your control. If you have a good takeaway, you'll have a good chain of excellence all the way through. If you have a bad takeaway, you'll suffer the consequences. Now we're going to talk about the loading zone in the arc player. The loading zone is the area between waist high back to the top of the swing, where actually the setting of the wrist and the folding of the elbow and the loading of the club and the power is getting loaded up at the, towards the top of the swing. To help us do this again, we're going to ask Jason to come in here. Jason, if you stand right there, I'll put this pole on the ground and we'll have you uh, set up to the ball. Now, as the arc player goes away, as we right described, this is the area where the, the club will start loading. There hasn't been any wrist set yet at all. What first of all happens is the folding of the elbow, which will elevate the club and set the left wrist. So at the top of the swing, as you can see here, the arms will be in a very high position with the left thumb supporting the shaft. It's very important to have the arms in a high position for the arc player and not in a position over here. Uh, this also on the downswing helps the falling forward of the upper body so the weight will go into the ball of the left foot. Okay, we'll show that from the other angle here. Okay. Okay, as we go back again, the, low, the right elbow will fold as a uh, a left wrist sets and the left thumb gets underneath the shaft of the club and the club is a very high position this causes the falling of the upper body here so the weight will now start going to the ball of the left foot this sets up the first part of the downswing 
This is called the loading zone, and this is where we will get the uh, most of the wrist set and the uh, power in the club stored in this area. We are now ready for the third building block, the downswing. The downswing is basically broken down into three parts. The transition and slotting of the golf club, the delivery zone to impact, and the impact to finish. Let's go ahead and start with the transition and slotting of the golf club. Let's talk about what happens when we want to deliver the club. How to slot it and how to deliver it. Once again, we bring the arc pole out. The arc pole is going to be right on the, toe, right on the ball of the foot line, extended out from the center of gravity or center of balance line. OK, go ahead and set up to it. Jason will turn the club back one piece fold to the top, hinging it with the left wrist, right arm folding and elevating. From this position, he will begin his fall. Now, what we have to understand is, is the arc player is a single axis player. The top of the spine represents his single axis. And what happens when he takes the club back, I'll show you. Turn. Now, take the club back to the top. When he takes the club back, the top of his spine stays in place, but his lower spine shifts to the right as the right leg straightens. And what this does is creates an extended axis from the top of the spine all the way down to the heel of his right foot, setting up his axis on the backswing and setting up a fall on his downswing. Then what happens downswing is the lower body begins to fall forward to counteract the falling of the upper body forward, and that drops the club. When that happens, the lower spine now shifts in line with the left leg, so we have a continuous axis from the top of the spine down to the lower spine in line with the left leg all the way down to his left heel. So it works as a triangle. This stays in place here in the backswing and moves through here in the downswing. So let's go ahead and set up down the line. So the arc player works back in a single one-piece action. The right arm folds while the left wrist hinges. When that happens, the hinging and elevating the club starts the upper body to fall forward. The lower body creates a counter-falling action. What that does is drops the club into the slot, lining up this axis position, and puts him in position so now he can rotate the lower body through. All golf swings are basically the same once the club has dropped back to the shaft plane, because all that happens is the hips turn and deliver the club into the back of the golf ball. Let's watch Jason do this in full motion. Slow motion to the takeaway. We are now ready for the second element of the downswing. The delivery zone to impact, the moment of truth. Now give me a hand with that, I'm gonna bring Jason on. Jason, come on over here. Go ahead and hold the golf club. So far what we've done is we've gotten Jason all the way back to the top of the backswing. We've helped him slot the golf club from the transition area and drop it down to the delivery zone. Now what we're ready to do is to utilize our hips by rotating them through and deliver the golf club into the back of the golf ball with maximum velocity and maximum speed, okay? Let's go ahead, take it to the top. Once the club has been slotted into the zone, all that happens here is his left hip turns out of the way and it's like slamming a door. As the left hip turns out of the way, the left leg straightens up and the club is delivered into the back of the golf ball. Let's go ahead and face them. Take it back to the top. Okay, turn and slot. Now deliver it. Good. Now, we're finally going to let Jason hit a golf ball. Jason, go ahead and get set up to it. What you can see there is once the club dropped into there, he stored all of his energy and simply ripped through the golf ball, allowing the club to do the work for him. Now we're ready to take it from impact to the finish. 
I'll have Jason swing this direction here and we can talk a little bit about what happens in his uh, downswing. Assume the impact position, Jason, if you would. In the impact position, we can see how the hips are getting out of the way and he's off his uh, right heel here. At this point, the arc player is going to kind of sling the club. He's going to be kind of an in to out type of player with a hand and arm release and then he'll go to the finish maintaining the axis of, of the upper spine and you can see here where you can see he's kind of in a C position with his back and he's maintained that spine position. Okay Jason if you'd uh, swing down the line please for us. Same thing, we'll get to the impact position and start right there. Impact again, you can see how the hips are kind of open and off the uh, back foot. Now you're going to see this is a slinging type of inside outside motion with a hand and arm release. And at this point here, he's going to go ahead and finish the swing in that typical C position, uh, which you've heard about many times. But this keeps the integrity of the arc swing. Thank you, Jason. So in talking about the impact to finish, what we really are saying is the golf club uh, through its momentum is going through impact very fast. Nothing the golfer can really do to, is except to try to maintain the uh, spine axis of his swing and finish in this, in this C position. Power is the desire of all of us. Every single one of us wants to hit the golf ball farther. We all have distance potential, but what happens is we have power leaks in our swing that make us hit it shorter. Where do those power leaks occur? Well, first we need to understand where the arc player generates his force from. Once we understand that, we'll see where the power leaks occur. The arc player generates his force by creating width and height, and then creating a falling action and a rotary action to, to generate the force through the golf ball. What we need to see is where those breakdowns happen or the power leaks occur. Well, the right foot is one of the most vital areas. The right foot must be in a square condition because if the right foot gets flared out, the right leg maintains its flex. When it maintains its flex, we lose the height of our right side, eliminating the fall and the downswing. So we need to keep the right foot in a square position. When that happens, the right leg will straighten up, getting the right side nice and high, helping us to get to our height dimension. The second area happens with the hips. The hips must be in a closed position at address. If the hips start in a square or open position, what happens is we never get to straighten that right leg. But if the, right, if the hips start in a closed position, when the right hip turns back, it will cause that right leg to lock up, setting up the downswing fall and causing us to generate force. So we need to make sure that the hips are in a closed condition. We also need to make sure the right hand grip is in the correct position. If the right hand grip is too much under the handle, the right arm will fold too early, which will break down the extension and the height in the backswing. So the right hand needs to be more on top with the knuckles aligned. And when that happens, then the club will go back more one piece with the right arm staying on top. The left hand position is also vital. It needs to be diagonally in the hand with a short left thumb, because what that does is allows us to set the club much later in the back swing, and it causes us to have some down cocking to create more angle and more force in the down swing. But if the left thumb gets too long, the club and hands hinge too early, getting the club in the height dimension, and we lose that down cock in the down swing. So we need to grab the club across the body here, making sure we get the short left thumb position. So short left thumb, right hand with the knuckles aligned in this position. That is the correct grip. Now, let's talk about what happens in the back swing. The arc player needs to create a one-piece takeaway where the shoulders and two arms work back as a unit. If his posture happens to get too bent over, what happens is the arms get too much swing to him and get the club deep. So what he has to keep is an erect posture position. When he has that erect posture position, he will then turn the club back one piece. With the right hand, it will keep it in position so it doesn't hinge early. Then he's got his width. When the right arm then folds up, it elevates the club, getting in the height dimension, causing the right shoulder to get higher and the right hip, 
setting up the falling action. So it's important that we grip the club properly and take it back one piece. Now the downswing action must occur with a falling and then a rotating. Well, the key to the rotation in the downswing is that left foot position. When that left foot is flared out so the toes are square, it allows us to fall into the downswing, but it allows us to rotate so the leg locks up, accelerating the club through impact. So remember, to eliminate power leaks, we need to set up to the golf ball properly. We need to get the proper grip, grabbing the club first across our body, then elevating it up in front of us, lining up the knuckles. We need to get the right foot in a square position, stance closed, left foot flared. Then what we need to do is take the club back with a one-piece takeaway, allowing the right arm to fold and elevate and creating the downswing fall, dropping the club in the slot and the body rotating through. Follow these tips and the power lakes will disappear and the distance will occur and you hit the ball longer and straighter every single time, I guarantee it. Let's review the building blocks of the arc swing. Let's start with the preparation stage. The arc player will always grab the club across their body, getting a short left thumb. They will then elevate the club, placing the right hand on it, lining the knuckles, putting the right hand into a weaker position. They will locate the golf ball opposite the logo on their shirt for the five iron through the wedge. The long irons will move to the, and the fairway woods will move to the armpit and the teed up driver or fairway woods will be opposite the shoulder socket. They will create their posture by bending forward from the hips, getting the rear end up, pinching the knees in. The right foot will be in a square position. The stance will be closed with the left foot flaring to square. How wide the stance will be will be determined by how much the right hand folds above the foot. The hip will be in a closed position so they match the heels. And the club face and feet are going to be square to the target. We will then ready for the second building block, the takeaway. The takeaway will be a one-piece action with the shoulders and two arms working together as a unit. The right arm will simply fold, line the left wrist to hinge, elevating the club into the height dimension, which will set up the third and final building block. It will start a forward fall, which the upper body will simply uh, right itself and the lower body will move from heel to toe laterally, slotting the golf club into the delivery zone and then we will simply turn through to a finish, finishing in a high position in that inverted C position. Work on these drills and work on these fundamentals and I guarantee you will play the best golf of your life hitting longest and straightest shots you've ever, ever imagined.